Hi, my name is Chris and this is my review of VoltageStandards.com DMM Check Plus. I uh, decided to make this review because I couldn't find another review of it online and I know how hard uh, I was searching for information on it and couldn't find any. Um, I would say this is a pretty multi-featured um, you know, multimeter calibration tool, if you will. Uh, it handles AC and DC voltage. It handles frequency, duty cycle, AC, DC amperage, and resistance for its tests. Um, the resistors are, I think, 0.1% accuracy. So uh, this thing, from what I've seen, is pretty dead on. And I'm going to be verifying this against my HP. 3457A. Uh, I've done these tests already. I have uh, a spreadsheet with all the equipment that I own that I've verified against the voltage standard. And uh, if you guys would like, I could go ahead and uh, post that spreadsheet online, and you can see the different formulas that I've used, and you know, give me kind of any kind of input that you'd like. Um, so let me go ahead and. Uh, move the camera so we could see the actual test a little bit better okay so I guess since we're already on AC and uh, the other DMM checks don't handle frequency this would be the perfect time to start with frequency So, I purchased the DMM Check Plus model that offers two different frequency ranges, and um, I think it's a $10 extra feature. I chose 100 hertz and 19 kilohertz. Right now, um, we're at the 100 uh, at the 100 hertz range, and my multimeter is reading 100.0053 hertz. And um, let me show you what they send me here they sent me so as you can see it's 100.004788 Hertz so it's right there one thing you can notice if you look up in this corner right here is that um, it's had 481 uh, sorry 981 hours of burn-in time um, that's a lot longer than they claimed and I'm very happy because that means that this thing's going to have increased stability. Um, so the way you change frequency ranges on this is just to reiterate you can, uh, you can only verify frequency if you're in the AC range so you move it back to DC then back to AC and uh, now it should be in the 19 kilohertz range. Uh, I apologize about my HP 3457A uh, not refreshing very quickly I have my number of power line cycles set to 10 just so it removes uh, some of the gross jitter kind of averages it out if you will um, so the rated spec on this um, is 18.868828 kilohertz and this is 18.8691 so that's incredibly close. That's um, three of the last significant uh, digit values off. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move in, since I'm already set to AC, I'm going to move to the AC volt. And um, this is supposed to be 4.999. So it's 4.9. 983. This is the measurement that my uh, uh, HP is closest to being out of spec on. Um, on my uh, Keithley, which I'll just demonstrate just this one test here. It should be a lot closer. So now that it's settled down, it's 5.0053. Uh, 
0.28. So as you see, this one reads just a tad high, and this one reads a little bit, definitely kind of low. Now we can go ahead and move over to the DC range. The stated value on this is 5.000, and the value that this is claiming is 5.000, essentially, it's a movement on the end. Um, the next test that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do um, DC amperage. The DC amperage on this is rated is stated at not uh, 0.9998 milliamps, and this is 0.99982 milliamps. So absolutely right on the money. And we'll switch this to AC now. And also 0.9998. I'm now going to test the ohms range, and we're going to start with 100 ohms. The stated value of this at 100 ohms on this particular unit is 100.036 ohms, and this is the one with the highest percent, measure with the highest percentage error off, it's 100.139 instead of 100.036. One of the reasons why that is, is I'm not doing a four wire test on it, nor have I zeroed this out. Nor does it really matter because this is not a review of the HP, it's a review of this. And I have done the tests on that and it, it comes out uh, very close. Um, next one is the one kilo ohm resistor. And the one kilo ohm stated value on this is 999.27 ohms, and this is 999.4 ohms. So, very close. I've moved to the 10K resistor, and it's uh, 9.9997K. And this is doing. This is displaying 10.00025. So that's very close. Now we've moved to the 100 kilo ohm. The stated resistance on this is 100.092, and I'm looking at 100.096. might have noticed that we haven't yet tested duty cycle. I don't have a multimeter that handles duty cycle measurements. So, I know the Agilent does. Let me bring them a little closer. Oops. Sorry about that. The <laughs> tripod's being a little menacing. So one of the one of the things you do have to remember is that um, your multi your uh, DMM check plus does have to be in AC mode in order to do the frequency measurements. I'm now uh, flipping on my oscilloscope probes, and oh yay, I'm at the right setting. So I'm at uh, 100 hertz at 50.1 to 50.0 duty cycle approximately and that's exactly what 
the the data sheet on uh, the DMM Check Plus says uh, 50.021 hertz duty cycle and 100.004 hertz. So that's bang on. Let's try the uh, 19K range. So the DMM Check Plus is rated at 18.868 kilohertz. Um, I'm getting 18.87 kilohertz. That's perfect. And duty cycle is rated at 49.1168, and I'm getting 49.1. So it's reading absolutely dead on. By the way, uh, thank you, David Jones, for recommending the marvelous Agilent oscilloscope. I really do enjoy it. So, I hope you enjoyed this review of the DMM Check Plus. And, uh, oh, one more thing I forgot to state. Um, I also, per, I have uh, two options on this DMM Check Plus. One of them is the, um, the additional uh, frequency range, so I have two frequency ranges, and I have this attractive protective case for it. Um, one thing I purchased afterwards, which I'm uh, really happy that I did, is this uh, Pelican case. It fits it absolutely perfectly. It's the uh, Pelican 1120. I can go ahead and uh, post my uh, calibration information online. Please uh, let me know if you have any further questions regarding the DMM Check Plus and I'll be happy to answer them if I could. Thank you guys.